do not provoke the children, lest they become discouraged. God says, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, and not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, hearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and for people, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong they have done. And there is no partiality. This letter is a guide that Paul gives to us and provides us for ways in which we can love another within a family. And it is illuminating and in ways that reminds us that the justice of the Lord, that even though the roles and function are given to us and how we just how we are invited to act into that we are still called uh, we're still seen equally by the Lord. And that there is a huge reminder that whether you are man, woman, that there is no partiality in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And that there is equality and if injustice is seen in the Lord Merciful and justice by God. Thank you so much for this morning, for um, waking us up and bringing us here. Despite the ways in which the enemy may stumble us, we thank you for giving us the boldness and strength to keep us on. I pray that this morning will be filled with love that is abound in others, and that you remind us your love fully surrounds And that in that love, we can see it, believe it, and live it out, and share it with you. Good morning. Happy, happy. <laughs> happy, happy Sunday. Look around and let's greet each other in peace and love. Look at the person next to you. Hi, happy Valentine's. Happy Hearts Day. Nabigyan mo na ba ng flowers ang iyong minamahal? We're still in our Feb Eve The Love series. Last Sunday, we talked about the perspective of love. Uh, to love is to what? To forgive. This morning, we'll look at the perspective of to love is, it means forevermore, right? Totoo bang uh, may forever? Yan ang magandang tanong sa umaga na to. Tingnan mo nga yung katabi mo, lalo na kung ang katabi mo ang iyong, ang iyong kabiyak, no, ang iyong spouse, mukha ba siyang may forever? Ikaw ba ang kanyang Forever. Let's look at the famous love team of the yesteryears from the 1950s love team. Alam niyo, lolo ni Pastor Don Dian eh, ng New Hope Nas. I'd like to thank Brother Ed for the t-shirt he gave me two years ago, Love Does. Thank you, New Hope Nas. And uh, how about this? In the 1960s, mag ka nang magtago, alam ko, inabot mo yan. During the 70s, love team, right? How about the 80s? Kinikilig pa nga kayo doon sa McDonald's commercial nila, di ba? How about the 90s? Ito na kasi yung inabot ka. <laughs> but the forever love team, sabi mo sa katabi mo, it will just me, just be, just me and God. Ako at ang Panginoon, yun ang may forever, right? It will last for eternity. Let me share to you the seven Greek love words. One good thing about the Greeks, no, they know how to express things. In fact, a lot of words came from Greek words, no, yung mga origin, because this was used because of the Grecian Empire, no, led by uh, Alexander the Great, na natumalo sa Babylonian and Persian Empire. They were huge before. Even the New Testament was written in Greek. No, one good thing about them is they were able to express uh, mga words about love. There are a lot of uh, meaning na pagdating sa pag-ibig. Eros, 
Yun, the romantic, passionate love. No? That's why I remember I was in Naga, February 14. I was uh, conducting a training. No? And uh, we need uh, a hotel or a motel. And we can't find any. So we stayed in the uh, plaza in Naga for at least 2 a.m. in the morning, waiting for someone to be out of the motel room so that, you know, it's full pack because it's February 14. That's Eros love. How about philia or Philadelphia, brotherly love or intimate, authentic friendship? Ludus, playful, flirtatious love. These are how the world, you know, interpret love. Storge, unconditional famili familial love. The one you feel with your grandmother, grandfather. Philosia, self-love. Ito yung gandang-ganda at gwapong-gwapo sa sarili. <laughs> Pragma, committed, companion companionate love. And agape, the best of all. No? Empathetic, universal love. So, that's what we are looking at. Paul wrote about you know, uh, how to rule you know, our Christian households. He talked about uh, being a wife, being a husband, being a parent, being a child, even being a bond servant, even being a servant or being a master. But we will not look at the perspective of you know, servant, master and servant, or uh, parent and children. We will look at the perspective of wife and husband. It says here in verse 18, Wives, para may, <laughs> para merong ano, para may radio, may DCAS. Uh, wives, submit to your husbands as a fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And then, it talks about the children. Paul talks about the children and so on and so forth. But, in verse 23, let's jump to verse 23. It says there, whatever you do, do, no, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Tell the person next to you, you are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. This morning, let's talk about the purpose, God's plan, and the biblical roles in marriage. Countless times I conducted officiated weddings or renewal of vows, and I always preach about this. Every, every year, every Valentine's, you know, I preach about this. The purpose of marriage the God's plan for marriage, and the biblical. Let me share to you top reasons why people marry. Bakit ba nagpapakasal ang mga tao? No, let's look at the, the sa pinaka mababang percentage. No? Sabi nila, we get married because uh, 45% na nag-aasawa din mga tao because meron desire for a special occasion. That dream that wedding dream of women, no, to be in a white dress, no, at uh, there is this desire, no, that someday this will come. Fifty percent, it's a response to family pressure, for our culture, Filipino cultures. Remember our titas, uy kamusta ka na? Tumaba ka yata? May asawa ka na ba? Diba? So lagi mga ganon tanong, right? So there's a Family pressure na, oh, you're 35 years old, kailangan mo na mag-asawa. So, 62% because of religious beliefs. Iglesia ka ni Cristo, Iglesia ka ni Cristo, let's get married. Right? Mormons ka, Mormons ako, let's get married. Christian ka, Christian ako, let's get married. How about 66% because of financial stability? Yan. Yung magpapakasal ka ng dahil sa may 4Ms. Matandang, mayaman, madaling mamatay. How about... 66% uh, not only for financial status but for legal status, right? There's a lot of people who get married because of legal status. And 77% uh, to make a public commitment to each other. Yan, para meron naman tayong ma mapakita sa Facebook no, na tayo ay uh, so much in love. How about 79% security for children? 
ang tagal na natin nagsasama eh. Magpakasal na tayo kasi college na yung anak natin. Para naman secured sila. Right? How about 82% to signify a lifelong commitment? Yan, medyo paganda na ng paganda. 88% because of companionship. You wanna sing, I wanna grow old with you. Right? The most important of all, 91% people get married because of love. Look at the person next to you. Kung asawa mo yan, you know, he or she married you because of love. Right? Parang kinikilig kayo. Hindi pa tayo nagsisimula. We started our love team in February 10, 1997. Last February 10, we, we celebrated our 24th year anniversary. Next year, it will be 25th. So I will take it as a if you will not come on our 25th uh, wedding anniversary. At kayo rin, lahat ng nanon sa Facebook, pumunta kayo kung kaya nyo. <laughs> so, uh, you see, God created marriage and designed it with a specific purpose and plan. But ignoring His design, chaos. Confusion, pain, and suffering. Do you agree with that? There's a purpose for marriage. No, the word purpose for marriage. No, but there is God's purpose for marriage. We need to focus on that. God's purpose and marriage. Number one, the marriage, no, your marriage ninyo is not primarily about you. What? Naganda pa naman ako. Tagal kong pinatahi yung trahi di bod ako. Hindi pala patungkol sa akin to. I don't know if you will remember, there was a book written by Rick Warren. It was a bestseller, right? The Purpose Driven Life. Yung first sentence, ano? Not about you. Same thing with marriage. The purpose of marriage, the purpose of life. It's not about you. In verse 23, Paul explained it. No, He talked about the wife, the, the, the role of the husband, the role of the, the bond servants, the role of the parents, children. But sa dulo, sabi niya, whatever you do, it's not about you. Work heartily, as for the Lord, and not for men. You are getting married. You got married not because you want to please people around you. You want to you know, you relieve the, uh, the pressure of uh, uh, being single forever. No, it is because it is a God's call to your life. Do you know that your partner is a gift from God? So marriage is not about you. Number two, it is important to become the right person as it is to find the right person. Especially for those people who are not yet married. Single people, you know, those who are listening, watching us in Facebook and on YouTube. Those people who are still single who are here. Who are the single people? right? Single who have never been married, right? Divorced. Legally separated, widow, widower, madaming single people. No, akala natin ang single, yung hindi palang nag-aasawa. No, we, we forgot that there are other kinds of single. No, last week we talked about love in the perspective of forgiveness. This week in the perspective of marriage, there's forevermore. Next week we'll talk about the perspective of being a single person. No, what is the importance of purity? So we are in a love series and the and the following week, we'll talk about the perspective of love in the eyes of God. No? And we have two different preachers for the following uh, two Sundays. So let's be excited. Anyway, let's go back. It is, it is just important to become the right person. So, single people, kung gusto mo na forever, you need to understand, sabi sa Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Never seek for a partner. Seek God first. Be the right person. Kasi inaanap mo si Mr. Right at si Mr. Right. Si Mr. Right at si Ms. Right. You're not yet the Mr. Right or Ms. Right for that person. What if you find that person? Lugi siya. Right na siya. Ikaw hindi pa. Right? So, ibig sabihin... No, it is just important to become the right person. And how do you become the right person? You seek the holy God. Sabi ng Panginoon, Be holy, for I am holy. You seek the Lord's face. You seek His righteousness. Be intimate with God. 
And soon you'll be surprised, one day he will give to you the desires of your heart. Never go to a bar or never go to a certain places or find love in many areas. Find love with God. Hanapin mo ang Panginoon and I'm sure He will give it to you. Number three, another, another purpose of marriage is that, alam niyo ba, the myth of the one, no, is not biblical. The one you married is the one with whom you are to make a life. So stop saying that, sayang, kung, kung, kung sana kami lang ang nagkatuluyan. Siya talaga yung dawan ko eh. Alam niyo yung uh, totga? Alam niyo ibig sabihin ng totga? The one that get away? This is very famous with the, the millennials. They always say this, no? Oh, that, that was my high school uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. He or she no, is the one who got away. That's not true. To whom you are presently married right now, the one you married is the one with whom you are to make a life with. Amen? Kahit na kasi laki na ng tiyan ng pastor niyo yan. <laughs> Kahit na maputi na ang buhok niyan. <laughs> Alam niyo, dinisign niya ng Panginoon para sa'yo. Right? Ang tunay na pag-ibig hindi tingin sa panlabas lamang. Ang tunay na pag-ibig palagi nakikita sa puso, sa kalooban. Not alam mo that you are with the right person because he or she is a God's gift to you. Amen? Lakas na amen. Number four, marriage reflects to the world God's promise to be with us and to redeem us. You see, God, no, even the Lord uh, uh, reflects yung ating pagiging mag na He is like the husband. So ang challenge niya sa mga lalaki, be a husband like Jesus. And challenge sa mga babae, be a church. No? Submitting to Jesus. No? Pag-usapan natin yung submission niya, medyo, na, medyo mahirap naman nata. Lagi na lang kami magsasubmit mo palagi. Mamaya, pag-usapan natin. Number five, marriage is a covenant. Covenant, a permanent promise, not a contract. You see, contract expires. Right? A marriage will have expiration. The only time it will expire is that when we left this world, right? So, walang expiration ang marriage. So, kumbaga, yan na yun. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin yung kasabihan natin mga Pilipinang susolik ta sa nanay mo. Hindi pwede yun, ha? Walang kontrata kayong pinirmahan ng, ng biyanan ninyo. Number six, marriage is more than a device to suit our own needs and it exists for a bigger purpose. At yung bigger purpose na to, marriage, no? the ultimate purpose of marriage is reflecting God's image. That's why sabi ni Titus, no? sabi ni Timothy, these are the requirements for people who wants to lead the church. These are the requirements who wants to, to lead an organization, to be a good role model. No? Their marriage must, re- must reflect God. The, how they father their children must reflect God. You see, your marriage, no, the ultimate, na masasabi mo na, well, I'm successful because, you know, I'm 50, it is my 50th year in my marriage. Pwede naman sa 50 years, away kayo na away. Eh. Di ba? Oh, well, I'm successful because I was able to bought my wife this, my husband this, blah, blah, blah. You see, the ultimate purpose of marriage, if people will see you together, and they're so they're being blessed with your relationship. That is not the purpose of this. So you lift up, you serve. Brother, sister, girly, I always see God in your relationship. That's a good compliment, right? Anyway, let's go to God's plan. We talked about the purpose of marriage. Let's go to God's plan for marriage. You see, the God's plan for marriage. We can find it in Genesis 2, 18 to 24. Let's read it. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, out of the ground, the Lord had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he could call them. 
Sabi ng Panginoon, kailangan meron siyang partner. Kaya out of the ground, one good thing about science, pag tinignan mo yung composition ng soil at composition ng katawan natin, ang daming similarities. So, totoo yun sa Bible. Sabi nga nung kanta, Nagmula sa lupa. Di ba? And here, now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens. Pero wala akong nakikita. Sabi niya, pangalanan mo nga ito lahat. Pero sabi ni Adam, Lord, di ko naman makikita na dating a monkey or an elephant. Parang wala akong partner. And whatever the man called every living, living creature, that was its name. Because he was called to what? To govern, to dominate over these creatures. But he was, not cor- uh, he was not called to govern or dominate over his wife. Okay, bayon. He was called to lead his wife. He was not called to dominate or to govern his wife. And it also applies to us, right? How about in uh, verse 20? The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to, to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made it into a woman, brought her to the man. Yan, may partner na si Adam. That was the first ever wedding. That was the first ever marriage. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Amen? God, God's plan for marriage. It's so unique. You see, if you will look at your partner right now, that is a unique gift from God. Number one, Eve's creation was different, right? It was so different no, from other animals' creation. No, clearly, she was very special. Special to God. Let's clarify this. Men, we thought we have the privilege, that we have the favor, we're more, we have more strength than women. But you see, in God's eyes, men and women are both special to God's eyes. Let's be clear about that. Amen? Isha is the Hebrew word for woman, and Ish is the Hebrew word for man. Adam made the distinction in his naming of Eve. Unlike, oh, I call this lion, elephant, hippo. But this one, special. No? I will call her Isha. Because why? The word for woman is the Hebrew word for woman, and Ish is the Hebrew word for man. Number three, just as Eve was a gift to Adam, your spouse is also a gift from God. Diba? O gusto niyong kumanta ng Alam yung mga kanta sa katoliko dati, naalala niyan. Yung purihin ng Diyos. Kasi binigyan ka ng gift ng Panginoon, di ba? After two years, three years. Kunin mo, o Diyos. At tanggapin mo. Parang sinusoli mo na kay Lord, di ba? You see, receiving your spouse, is, uh, it means more than accepting him or her. It means you embrace the God-given differences is built into each of you. Do you know that you are different human being? So, what can I expect? Because the, 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 the real, the, the, a lot of, maraming source ng problema ng, mag, ng, ng, ng mag-asawa, nabubulal ako, alam niyo kung ano? Madami tayong expectations. Humuhopya tayo palagi. Hoping na bibigyan ka ng flowers, hoping na bibilan ka ng ng bagong uh, kotse, hoping, lagi tayong hope, hope, hope. 
Eh, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, tumigil ka na sa kakahopya. You need to accept him. or her. Uh, I'm hoping na sana kagaya ka ni kumpare. O sana kagaya ka ng taga-probinsya namin. Ganito, ganyan. Sana kagaya ka ng classmate ko nung high school. No. Accepting him or her, it means you embrace the God-given differences is built into each of you. Alam niyo, national problem of the Filipino people, we hate our features, we hate our noses, we hate our complexion. Kaya nga mayaman si Belo eh. Right? Pa-adjust ng ilong, paputi, di ba? Imagine, Filipino people hates their own language. Sa kanong kakita, punta ka sa Pilipinas, mga bata, hindi marunong magtagalog. Pilipinas yun ha? Dito, maintindihan ko pa eh. Here's the thing. We want to be somebody else. In marriage, please, do not think of somebody else. You are married to this person because God gave you that person. Amen? Amen? It's remembering every day that moment you join together they are each a special gift to one another. Tandaan nyo, you were joined by God. Right? Number three, your spouse is not your enemy. Tell the person next to you, your spouse is not your enemy. And receiving your spouse is a daily choice. Right? You need to receive your spouse. It's your daily choice. Now, let's look at the marriage no? and relationships. Biblical roles. Uh, we talk about the purposes. We talk about God's plan. Let's end it with the biblical roles in marriages. Biblical roles in marriages. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 22-26. Somehow similar. Doon sa sinulat ni Paul sa mga taga-kalosus. Wives. Submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with himself, or with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the way, in the same way, Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. What do we mean by this? Another thing in verse 29, For no one, wala nga naman, ano, na naiinis o nagagalit sa pili niya. Alam niyo ba, sabi sa sekulihiya, tayo daw ay uh, uh, ito, egocentric. No, ego means self, centric means centered. Somehow we 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 center, self-centered tayo in a sense. Uh, one classic example daw is when you uh, nagkaroon tayo ng group selfie. Pagka na-develop 'yan, mamaya no, magkakaroon tayo nun. Pag na-develop daw yung picture or lumabas na, pinost na, ang unang ang unang-una mong hahanapin sa group sino? Ikaw. Kasi baka nakanganga ka. Baka, alam mo yun, kasi conscious ka, baka, ano ba, tama ba yung kulay ng damit ko, di ba? Because we're, we're not really egocentric, right? We love ourselves. We take a bath daily, we love ourselves. Sino nga ba? No one ever hated his own flesh, right? But nourishes and cherishes it. Kaya nga, papaganda ka, papa, naglilinis ka ng katawan. It's just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of His body. Therefore, man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Kaya ang importante, ang una-una namin ginawa, 1997, when we got married, we made sure that separated from my parents, from she from her parents, live our own life. Until now, for 24 years, never we asked anything from our parents. Never. Something to boast about? Not, not because of our own effort. Because we were blessed by God. No, you want to be blessed? 
leave your parents. Right? Now, mag-asawa ka muna. <laughs> what else? It says here, no? however, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husbands. Now, I want to talk to all the husbands. If you're a husband, please raise your hand. There you go. Ayan. Let me talk to you. No? Uh, please repeat after me, all husbands who raise their hands. My role is to live to make my wife great. Ayan. Kinuha na ng mga cellphone yung mga asawa nila kasi re-record nila para sigurado lang, sinabi mo yan, ha? Ngayon, tuwing meron silang ihingin at saka may iutos sa'yo, eto oh, sinabi mo, simbahan yun. <laughs> Hindi ka pwede magsinungaling, simbahan yun. My role is to live, sabi mo. To make my wife great. Ulit natin. Maganda pa tayuin natin. Tumayo lahat ng husband. Nani ako, tayo po. Tayo po kayo, tayo. Mga husband. Ayan, nagagandahang, <laughs> nagagandahang lalaki. Ikasan nyo na ang cellphone nyo. <laughs> okay, repeat after me. My role is to live. My role is to live. To make my wife great. To make my wife great. Huli kayo. Ma- pwede na kayo. <laughs> Na-set up natin ng mga husband. But this is true. Right? This is true. This is very true. Our role is to live to make our wife, our, our, our wife great. No? Let's define a husband's role. Define nga natin ano ba ang role natin mga lalaki. No. Number one, husband's privilege, husband's privilege, privilege role is to love his wife. Wow, it's a privilege role. No. As Christ loved the church. Because we are being reflected in Christ's love. Si Kristo bilang head ng church, bilang husband ng church, ang church being wife, so nire-reflect natin ang leadership ni Jesus, nire-reflect natin mga lalaki ang kanyang pag-ibig. Kaya it's a privileged role. Right? Kasi it's clearly discussed by Paul. Number two, to do this, a husband has to know his wife. Kailangan kilala mo yung wife mo. How? You need to pay attention to her. Hmm? Kapag nagsasalita siya, makinig ka. Nako, guilty rin ako dyan. I'm sorry. Diba? Minsan, nakalipad yung isipan natin. Sino ba nanalo? Warriors ba? O ano? Kinakausap ka na pala. Hindi mo alam kung sinong... Alam mo yun? Guilty rin ako dyan eh. Pero, alam nyo, if you wanna know your wife, pay attention to her. Right? Nurture her. Ipaspa mo. Papedicure mo. Pamanicure mo. Nurture her. Kung gusto mag-aral, i-enroll mo. Sumba, ibigay mo. Para sa Mexi, di ba? How about cherish her? Here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the truth. Someday we will all expire, right? We will all die. Limited and time together. Cherish every moment with your wife and husband. Right? You'll never know. You'll never know. Ang expiration natin bukas, mamaya, next week, next month, next year. Lalo na ngayon may COVID-19, right? Let's not fear death because death will come upon us, right? But here's the thing. Ang gat macha-cherish nyo, i-cherish nyo ang iyong pag-ibig sa inyong asawa. Sabi nga sa verse 29, For no one ever hated his own body. So, di ba, ikaw, nurture mo ang body mo. It's a cherish mo. Right? Ikaw mismo. Di ba? Magpe-pay attention ka sa body mo. Make sure that you do that also, dear husbands, dear wives. Number three, husband, you are called to be the head of your wife. Just as Christ is the head of the church. Do not abuse it. Ay, ginarinig mo naman, ha? sinabi nung sa simbahan, ako ang head, ako ang masusunod. But that's not how Jesus led, led us, right? That's not how Jesus guided us. You see, leading means, linawi natin, ha? kasi madalas yung ginagamit itong about submission. Eh. Now, di ba naman sa simbahan, sabi sa Bible, nakasulat, eh, mag-submit ka. Eh. Kaya pag gusto ko, gusto ko, gawin mo. Walang, wala nang... 
ano ano pero pero here's the thing you are both loved by God you are both important to God husband and wife in fact we are both equal okay what if we will decide something for example bibili tayo ng bahay mga mga, mga bibili tayo ng kotse or pupunta lang tayo sa kaliwa o sa kanan two people must decide two two people must be in agreement do not use the card na submit dito ko tayo pupunta you see leading you were put by god in a position of leadership no Pero para ka lang nakasakay sa motorsiklo o sa kabayo, ikaw lang nasa unahan at nagmamaneho. Pero pantay kayo ng karapatan pag nakasakay kayo sa kabayo at sa motorsiklo kung saan kayo pupunta, parehas kayong may desisyon. Amen? Walang lesser person sa marriage. Amen? So, basagin na natin yung maling kultura natin mga Pinoy na ang macho ang lagi nasusunod. Hindi rin pwedeng maliring kultura natin na ang Andres ay oo lang ng oo. Tandaan nyo, ang Andres di saya at ang super macho ay hindi biblical. What is biblical? There is equality in marriage. Amen? Whenever you wanna try to uh, to, uh, to uh, what do you call this? To, to come up with the decision, you must come up with the decision together. Amen? So, dapat nag-agree kayong pareho. Alright? Headships means that the man sacrifices himself. You see? O, oh, di ba? Kasi nga, sa meet, dapat ikaw nagsisilihan mo ko. So, habang nagugas ka ng pinga, naglalaba ka manonood ako. You see? You must sacrifice yourself. In fact, mas matindi ulit natin, husbands. Not to be served, but to serve. Because Jesus came here to serve, not to be served. And remember, He's our role model, right? Kala natin, sarap ng position natin, binigay sa atin leadership. No, you need to sacrifice yourself to your wife. Kung unang may mamamatay, you need to submit. If I will have a choice, if I can give life to you, if I can give my kidney to you, that is sacrifices. No? You need to sacrifice yourself. We need to protect them. No, we need to sacrifice. So sabi nga, sacrifice ourselves, our needs, our desires, our dreams. Kung mabarkada tayo before, you know, umaga tayo, let's forget about those things, right? Ang panahon natin dapat sa asawa natin, hindi sa barkada. Amen? Ang panahon natin dapat sa anak natin, hindi sa barkada. Amen? Kung yun ang nakagawian natin, kalimutan na natin yun. Tinawag tayo ng Panginoon, mag-lead ng pamilya, hindi ng barkada. Amen? Headship also means that the man has the burden of taking the initiative to move things forward on behalf of the family. So you move forward, you fade the way sa future ng pamilya nyo. Now, let's give you practical tips sa mga kalalakihan. Pray daily with your wife. Text her love notes she'd like to receive. Hindi yung, nakasain ka na? Di ba? Luto na ba? Ano ulam ngayon? Yung mga minsan text natin, di ba? Text or love notes she'd like to receive. No? Mga tipong text na, Google ka ba? Sasagot ka sa mo. Bakit? Kasi, nakita ko na sa'yo ang lahat. Next. You have the answer for everything. Right? Uh, tapos, look into her eyes. Paminsan-minsan. Sabi mo sa kanya, I'd marry you all over again. Right? Mamaya, pakasalan mo siya mamaya. We have a renewal of vows. Replace the D word with the C word. We should be focusing on commitment, not on divorce. Amen? Let's remain faithful to her. This is important. Let's remain faithful to our wife. Wag ka na tumingin sa iba. Tumingin ka na lang sa me. Persevere. Don't quit. Kapag ka ikaw ay nahihirapan sa relasyon, persevere. Don't quit. Remember, Jesus is always, is always here to help you. Let's define wives' roles. What are the roles of wives? Number one, being a helper. God is called a helper. He himself. He called himself a helper. Diba sabi 
121, 1 to 2, if God calls himself a helper, now it's not a derogatory term. Helping involves a willing fellowship, not in a mindless way, but in a vigorous, robust, feminine way that comes alongside a husband as a partner. You see, being a helper, sometimes we, we, we put a tag that, oh, this is derogative. Kasi nakalagay, wanted, helper, sa labas ng, labas ng gate. Ano yun? Katulong, chimiaa, maid. No, it, it's not about that. There's nothing wrong about that job. Don't get me wrong. But the thing is, if this being der, der, kumbaga, derogatory, mababa ang tingin ng ating kultura dito, here's the thing. Even God called himself a helper. That's why women, you were called by God to help your husband. Right? Sabi nga sa Salmo, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from, from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Number two, wives. Wives are called to respect their husbands. <laughs> Here's the truth. There is no powerful attitude that a wife can have towards her husband than respect. Respect is shown not just with words, but also with actions. And it flows from an attitude of the heart. In my past 24 years of marriage, never I experienced no, na pinahiya ako ng asawa ko sa harapan ng maraming tao. I grew up, I grew up with, you know, relatives who are kind of, whenever, I'm kind of afraid together, reunion, fiesta, Pinyagan, anything about Filipino festivities and there's inuman, everybody's happy. The problem is paglasing na lahat. At yung mga wife, hindi naman lasing. And then they will start to dis disrespect their husband. There was an incident, I remember I was young, a relative of mine, you know, the husband is joking about her, blah, blah, blah. He's so drunk. And the wife took the, a bottle of beer at binuho sa ulo ng lalaki. It was so, nakakaya. It's so, right? So, it's so awkward. You see, that is not respect. Respect is, sabi nga, do not wash your dirty linens in the public. Nasa public, ibig sabihin, pag may away kayo, huwag kayong magsumbang sa Facebook. Kasi pagpipestahan kayo ng mga taong hindi nyo kilala. Amen? Ito matindi. Wives, kapag ka meron kang problema sa asawa mo, isumbong mo sa Diyos. Manalangin ka. Umiyak ka sa Diyos. Lord, sama na loob ko sa asawa ko. <laughs> Husbands, katakutan nyo, huwag yung sumbong sa manu sa sabihanan nyo. Katakutan nyo yung sumbong sa Diyos. Dahil pag binalikan ka ng Diyos, may problema ka. At pag napatunayan ng Diyos na meron ka talagang ginawang mali, ang Diyos equalizer. He's a just God. He will make sure that He will hear yung iyak ng kanyang wife, ng iyong wife. So make sure, no, na kung may problema kayo, sumbong niyo sa Diyos, ayusin kayo ng Panginoon. Amen? In Proverbs 14.1, the wisest woman builds her house, no, but folly with her own hands tears it down because of what? Disrespect. Please, do not disrespect your husband. Amen? Number three, cheering him on. Alam niyo ang cheerleader, kahit natatalo na, nag-cheer pa rin. Yun ang cheerleader. Di ba? Yung mga, mga cheerleader ng mga teams sa NBA, sa NFL, kahit natambak na, cheer pa rin sila. Di ba? Ganun ang role natin. Bye. We are cheerleaders. Women are called to encourage their husbands. Lead their families well. For most men, alam niyo ba that their deepest fear, our deepest fear as men is to fail. And our deepest need is the confidence to know that we can succeed. The kind of confidence only a wife can provide. Amen? Not the kind of confidence number two, number three, number four can provide. Only a wife can provide. Even when a husband makes mistakes, he needs encouragement for the ways he's trying to lead. Kumbaga, give room. Huwag naman laging naka-pressure tayo. Magkakamali, magkakamali yung leader natin sa bahay. Give him room na magkamali. Right? Intindihin natin. Siya perfecto pa. Diba? Number four, submitting. Ito yung malaking issue sa mundo. You see, submission means following leadership. That's it. 
the negative tendency in many marriages is for a man to retreat from leadership. Ito na, yung naging Andres de Saya na. And a wife to step in. And while she may be plenty confident to make good decisions, she is still replacing the role that God outlined in the scripture. You see, para tong ano, stage play. May mga linya tayo at roles na dapat gampanan. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-overstep. Di ba? Ang madalas matalo sa volleyball team, those players na nag-aagawan ng bola. Right? Kaya nga sinasabi nila, mine! Di ba? So we have roles. We need, to, we need to do our own roles. Sabi dito, uh, biblical submission does not violate the personality that God has given a woman, but calls her to live out her personality to its fullest as God intended. Okay, practical tips for women, for our wives, don't nag. Naku, maniwala kayo, isa sa mga pinakaayaw namin mga lalaki, yung nag kayo na nag. <laughs> Masakit sa tenga. Alam yun, love him for who he is. Being nag is like being nibbled to death by a duck. Imagine, mapapatay ka ba ng duck? Number two, don't look for him to obey God perfectly every time. Give him grace and forgiveness. Don't tear him down for who he isn't and what he doesn't do. Build him up even when you think he doesn't deserve it. You want to make your husband successful? Build him up. Okay? Wag mo siyang ikumpara kay ganito, kay ganyan. Now, don't listen to ungodly counsel that tells you to quit. Surround yourself with Christians who will encourage you to fulfill your marriage vows. Surround yourself with uh, kapatiran sa simbahan. Surround yourself, yung mga, kahit naman uh, 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 sabihin natin na wala doon sa Christian circle natin. But there are people no, na talagang kaibigan, masasabi mong kaibigan. At talagang gusto nila maging successful kayo sa inyong marriage. Now, surround yourself with these people. Number five, pray that your spouse will be surrounded also by, you know, by godly Christians who will love him and share with him what he needs. Don't do it yourself. Let God do it. Right? That's why we encourage you. Pagkatapos ng pandemic, meron kami dito basketball. Right? Si the brother Onad, si the brother uh, uh, Noel. So, kung nagbabasketball yung mga husband nyo, dali nyo dito. We will have discipleship program with them. No? Not because we want to make them a project, we just want to share them the love of God. Simple as that. Take it or leave it. Di ba? And as, so, uh, meron tayong fighting chance na magkaroon ng pagbabago sa puso at buhay ng mga tao. Right? Those are the purposes of marriage, God's plan for marriage, and biblical roles in marriage. Now, I'd like to call on no, those uh, mag-social distancing na lang tayo. So if you're a husband and a wife and your partner is here, I'd like to ask you to stand. All the husband and the wife. There you go. Ayan, tingin muna kay sa akin. You see, you promise to love, honor, and cherish one another through all things, right? Life has surely brought you both wonderful blessings and difficult challenges over the years. Some of you probably was married like, what, 10, 20 years ago, 25 years, 30 years. Some of you probably are, you, you know, newly wed. But here you are today, having fulfilled the vows to love, honor, and cherish you each made on your wedding day. I have a good news to you. God is smiling. Relationship niya sa Panginoon. You, you, want, you want to make sure that your relationship will work you know, with the help of God. As you celebrate here today, and as you reflect back over all the years as husband and wife, do you now wish to reaffirm the vows you took years ago? Ayan, wala naman pilitan. Kung gusto mong sabihin, I do, I do. <laughs> Ulitin ko lang, ha? Ulitin ko lang, nais mo ba sa Tagalog na i-reaffirm ang iyong uh, vows na ginawa mo noong yesteryears? Do you now wish to reaffirm the vows you took yesteryears? May I hear? I, yes, I, 
Yeah, may kilig-kilig factor pa. <laughs> now, I want you to face off. Please face each other <coughs> and join hands. Please face each other and join hands. <laughs> Itigil lang kasal. At ganun din, if you are watching us in Facebook or YouTube and you are now at home and you're with your husband and your wife, please join us online for the renewal of your vow. <laughs> Wala nang atrasan to. Sa, sabi nga nila, in Vegas, Leave that in Vegas. Eh. Pero dito, forever. <laughs> Let me talk to the husband first. Husband, will you continue as your wife and to continue to live in this happy, happy loving marriage? Answer me, please. Now, when you answer, when you answer my question, I don't want you to look at me. Hindi naman ako wife niyo. Look at your wife, eye to eye, with sincerity. Remember, nurture her, cherish her. <laughs> now, husbands, do you reaffirm your love for her? And we love, honor, and cherish her in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer, for better or for worse, and forsaking all others. Be faithful to her, no more number two, number three, number four. For as long as you both shall live. Your answer, please. I do. Yeah, nakarecord kayo, ha? Now let me talk to you, wives. Wife, will you continue to have your good-looking group? Na medyo naging chubby lang ng konti. As your husband, and continue to live in this happy and loving marriage. Your answer, please. I will. Do you reaffirm your love for him? And will you love, honor, and cherish him in sickness, may COVID do wala, and in health for richer or poorer, for better or for worse, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him. For as long as you both shall live. Answer, please. Yes, I do. I do. I do. Husband and wife, continue to look at each other. <laughs> On your wedding day, you exchange rings as symbol of the never-ending circle that symbolizes the eternal quality of God, an ending strength and an ending love. If you have your wedding rings with you, no, please remove it. No? O pag wala, ibig sabihin, sinyalis yan, husband, bilan nyo mamaya. <laughs> Nang bago. Kasi baka, baka tumaba na. <laughs> May you always wear your rings as a reminder of your wedding vow to each other and your commitment to continue to live in unity and happiness. To remind you of that commitment made on the wedding day, on your wedding day, you will re now renew your pledge. Husband, Please place your on your wife's hand with the words. Repeat after me. With this ring, I renew my pledge of love and commitment. Why? Please place your gift of a ring on your husband's hand with the words. Please repeat after me. With this ring, I renew my pledge of love and commitment. Oh. You see, God bless these rings and the two who exchange them in love on their wedding day. Keep them safe in the circle of your protection and love. You see, marriage is a commitment to learning to care for one another in mutually fulfilling ways. It's not an act, but a lifelong relationship always in the making. Marriage deepens and enriches every facet of life. Happiness is fuller, memories are fresher, commitment is stronger, even anger is felt more strongly and passes away more quickly. Marriage understands and forgives the mistakes life is unable to avoid. It encourages and nurtures life. 
new experiences, new ways of expressing a love that is deeper than life. When two people pledge their love and care for each other in marriage, they create a spirit unique unto themselves, which binds them closer than any person or written words. Marriage is a promise made in the hearts of two people who love each other, and the potential of marriage requires a lifetime to fulfill. Let us pray. May they be blessed with the guidance, strength, Lord God, and direction to make their relationship grow and blossom in the years ahead. May their home be blessed with joy and happiness, and may they strive together to make their hopes and dreams come true. Most of all, Lord, that, uh, that the couple be blessed by the love and support of family and friends as they continue life together as husband and wife. And from this day forth, may their worries be few, may their joys be many, and may their love grow more abundantly with each passing day. Amen and amen. You see, before you sit down, one of the great blessings of marriage is the joy of responsibility of raising family, right? You have truly been blessed to be parents of your beautiful children, right? Those are blessings. As a husband and wife, renew also vows of marriage today. Also, no, they also renew. Mag-renew rin kayo ng commitment to be loving and caring parents, right? Uh, recognizing with gratefulness and happiness and ful fulfillment that has brought to their marriage and family life. Now, husband and wife, today you have renewed the promises you made to each other on your wedding day. You have symbolized the renewal of marriage union by the joining of hands, the taking of vows, and by exchanging sufferings. As officiating minister of the Church of the Nazarene, by the power vested in California, please look at each other, hold hands. Look at each other, hold hands. Ayan. It is with pleasure that I conclude the ceremony of renewing the vows of marriage that joined you and forever binds you as husband please celebrate this renewal of vows with a sign of beautiful affection the most awaited moment please remove your mask please remove your mask you may now kiss the bride Palakpakan po natin, mabuhay ang mga bagong kasal muli. <laughs> Palakpakan po natin ang Diyos. Umaga na ito. After this, <laughs> after this, we, uh, we, we put a booth no, doon sa loob ng office. One couple at a time. Maglalagay tables and chairs outside. Uh, doon muna kayo mo po, pwede kayo magkape-kape, mag-biscuit, habang nihintay niyo yung opportunity niyo. We have a souvenir for you, Polaroid, pipicture kayo sa booth, no? para maalala niyo na kinasit kayo ngayon, February 14, 2021. At uh, ibig sabihin, bila niyo na regalo, yung inyong mga misis, mga mister. And uh, please also, a reminder for our church leaders, uh, your photos, your picture will be taken for our upcoming uh, website. So, uh, also, sabi nga natin eh, nurture her, cherish her, love her. So, I'd like to acknowledge all the beautiful women no, in this place. I'd like to ask uh, somebody, please, uh, kindly give them no, one long stem rose no, to signify this rose hindi galing sa church, hindi galing sa kung kanino man, ito ay galing sa Panginoon at galing sa asawa ninyo. So this rose will signify you, no? If you are a single woman, this rose will signify you that you are a beloved of God. If you are a married woman, also you are beloved of, beloved of God and your husband loves you dearly. So that rose is from your husband. Ayan, so you will receive a rose, a long stem rose. There you go. Sabi ko sa inyo, as we conclude, totoong my forever. We have forever love with God. Amen. Again, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon sa umaga natin.
I'd like to call on Sister Fe Maranan for our tithes and offering. Sister Fe.
Curtis, Roger, Maranan, Richie, or, or Quimo, Maranan, Stephen, and Valdez, Terry. How are you? So let's raise our hands and receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. So go in peace and spread the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.